I live on the land that belonged to my dad's grandfather and grandmother. They uh, were one of the first people that purchased the Vada strips here in the community of Chama. Our forefathers that came here, they came and they settled in Rio de la Culebra and they found a lot of areas that had good soil uh, and, and they remained here for the resource that was so abundant. Uh, it was the, the watershed from all the little streams that were coming into this beautiful, pristine valley here. When we as descendants of these forefathers that came and settled here um, have continued to use up the resource that is available to our lands. My name is Juanita Martinez and my grandmother uh, and grandfather are from northern New Mexico and so I have a New Mexican root and a southern Colorado root. This area we've been here for over 100 years, my family 150 years. You know this is home and you can't find this anywhere else. This community is so connected to the land and water. Really the people and place are inseparable. The Asequia system itself is a ditch system, but it's unique because it really encompasses a sense of community and a philosophy about water management and water sharing. A sense of fairness, a sense that everyone is entitled to water, um, but also that the environment, that the ecosystem is entitled to water. So they leave water in the streams because they feel like that's important for the health of the river system and for recharging the aquifer. We have 62 parciantes. Parciantes means they are farmers and they have the right to access this water. And the mayordomo is the one that tells the community who gets to water first and then the next person and the next person. One of the issues uh, that this community was dealing with was the recognition that outsiders could come in and purchase land and that they didn't have this verbal tradition, they didn't have family members who could tell them how things worked on the ditch. People were beginning to see where water was being hauled off in our water tanks, you know, from our streams and our ditches, they were pumping water out. And there's a reaction in landowners, wait a minute, where are you going with all this water? You know, that body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the landowners on, on ditches. That has awakened this community. I was really surprised to learn that even though the oldest water rights in our state are found in this community, there was no law on the books actually differentiating Asequia water management from other types of, of water management. In 2008, the Asequia recognition law was passed and one of the things that it did was that it established a right of first refusal. But what most people didn't realize is that that right could only be put into bylaws. And so that right of first refusal only existed if the ditch actually got together and created bylaws. I was antsy to tell you the truth. I was a little, not a little, skeptical. I was skeptical. even though they had the reluctance to look into this idea of bylaws, they chose to continue to explore it. Over a four-year period, they brought all of the members of their Asequia on board. And the idea of changing what was an oral tradition into something that's a written document that folks can understand, that's the best story of all. We held a meeting uh, about Asequias and asked interested students to come, and we had 100 law students show up. So we said, wow, we have all of these bright young people who are interested in, in being a part of this. How can we leverage and use that skill and that time and that energy? We're not where we used to be. We know our mission. We know that we're supposed to help other Asequia water users or the parciantes. We've learned pride in our cultural asset. If we 
think of this water that's going through here. We need to think of it as a community. The agriculture has been in this valley almost 200 years. The Calabria Basin is an excellent model. As we begin to think about how we move to a future with less water supply, climate change is changing. Yet these folks have endured that. And it was a sharing system that keeps every farmer sustainable. Sarah proposed maybe we should have a conference and tell everybody about what we do. And I told Sarah, Sarah, I don't know. We've never had a conference. What are we gonna talk about? She said, you're gonna talk about what you know best, which is this acequia. Every village has their acequia. And so everyone can contribute. We ended up calling it a congreso. It's brought community together, uh, the congreso. And, you know, every year you get more and more people. It's been good. You know, it's just a good discussion about water and, and the different uh, problems people are having that they find solutions for. You know, in the years past, it's been very low attendance. Now, this last year, we had a very good uh, audience uh, that came interested in finding out what, what is really happening. I think that through, you know, this Asekia Association, and Colorado Open Lands and me as their liaison has brought some attention that you know we need to start looking at what's happening to us and what might happen to us in the future. Colorado Open Lands has worked since 1981 to protect communities and in doing that they're protecting the water. If the land is the body then the water is the veins that run through it. It's the spirit and the soul of this place and I think that's really important in a day and age when we tend to be a little less connected to the landscape. We talk a lot in land conservation about perpetuity, but this community and these people live perpetuity every day. I can envision when their ancestors settled this over 150, 200 years ago, they envisioned for forever. And the cool thing is these people are still envisioning forever. They don't ever want it to change. And personally, I hope it never does.